Do you remember when FromSoft released the Elden Ring DLC and the Gremlins came out of the woodwork to shit on the game design and praise the last games because it's a fucking vicious cycle that we live in? Well, I listened to those apes, and I'm glad I did. Because I went back and I attempted Dark Souls 3 in both its DLCs. Yes, I know. Sekiro was the last FromSoft game, but you know what? We'll get to it. But Dark Souls 3 and both its DLCs are up there. And you know what? I wanted to see... It's been eight years since this game was released. Did it stand the test of time? Yeah, it did actually. It stood pretty well. There's a bunch of stuff that we can go over, so let's just dive right in. There's a bunch of lore about how old people were afraid of the dark, and they're now resurrecting basically everyone that used to link the fire to link them again. It's as if we brought George Droid back using the patented Fenton Reactor technology. I don't actually know all the lore, because uh, in the land of chimpanzees, I was a monkey. And, uh... My playthrough essentially went like this. Kill Vort, go grab the hammer, and learn that this thing fucking hits like a tank. I uh, I messed up every single side quest, and NPCs started to disappear, as if I had popped Dr. Jekyll's combo of Abilify and Glossaril. Playing this game blind is the optimal first playthrough, but buddy, you're not gonna fucking learn a damn thing. I've spent more time reading the wiki and combing Vadi videos to figure out what the hell is even going on than like any fucking game I've played. They literally wake your loser ass up and say, hey, we know that you failed to link the flame back in your day, but everyone that's linked it, they fucking dipped. We need you to go get them back. Well, except for Lieutenant Dan. Lieutenant Dan, he's gonna chill and he's gonna be like, you know what, I'm supposed to link it again here we go also he's how you get to transpose boss what basically the end of days for the dark souls universe with some favorite characters still around to kick ass such as andre and others who aren't with us unfortunately such as uh the giant blacksmith i hope you enjoyed legacy dungeons buddy because if you didn't this ain't, this is not the game for you it's basically one winding path if your rest stops being legacy dungeons however that ain't to say that they're not cool in fact, Anne Orlando isn't complete and utter dog shit with those archers anymore. I mean, it is a little bit getting up to Anne Orlando, but for the most part, it's not, like, terrible. Each area's got its own motif, and the, the areas, they feel distinct and they're right when we finally get to venture through them. Whether that's just be hoisting the flag to get off the castle wall, and finally being lowered down to the undead settlements, we got, like, urban areas, icy areas hellish fiery areas with the smoldering lake and even the graveyards are taking all the medieval fantasy boxes that being said i have no footage of the undead settlements because my obs decided to crash the first four hours of my recordings so everything up to the curse rod in greatwood we don't have footage of that's a fucking me problem i'm not restarting the game in new game plus to grab it you can call it lazy i'm gonna call it being real Let's move on to some gameplay. It's a Souls game. Literally, it's, it's the last Souls game. There's a ton of games that have tried to emulate the style, such as Lies of P and Lords of the Fallen, but FromSoft remains the king of the craft. If you've played Elden Ring, though, you've been spoiled by gameplay refinement. If you've somehow only played Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 2 before finding this video, then congrats. You're about to be spoiled by game refinement. First things first. I miss the stake of America, because I'm a fucking troglodyte who doesn't like to spend time on runbacks. Granted, these runbacks aren't as egregious as the 10 mile hike back to Seath, but they're still pretty obnoxious. I'm looking at you, Abyss Watchers. That run back alongside the Twin Princes actually makes me the most upset. Secondly, I want to complain about the Irithyll Dungeon. This place is like the fucking poison swamp if it took Tren. The Jailers can give your character actual aids, and they just delete your health bar. Not, not, not like the red bit inside of the bar, but the entire fucking bar. If I knew they were going to make me feel the after effects of a Fent overdose, I wouldn't have even fucked around in there. Guess what? You've got to fuck around in there. It's an actual required area, because it connects to the profaned capital, and that's the saving grace for it. It's a fucking slog. The shortcuts aren't helpful. There is a secret item on the dragon torso to actually fight Nameless Peak. But you know what? That's something else. Because you know, the shortcuts there don't actually help. Apparently you can find Sigurd here. But because I fucked everything up, I had already basically killed Yorm before having to go back through the area. Those are literally my only complaints. Everything else in this game is dope as fuck. 
There's definitely a lot of areas that were still like kind of stuck in the Bloodborne mindset, such as like Pontiff and moving around inside that church gave me a lot of like Vicar Amelia and Lawrence the First Cleric Beast type deals, but only with like the whole church setting. It wasn't like, oh hey, their move sets are very similar. You can definitely see that he was like the inspiration back to reuse for Rulana. However, Irithyll proper screams Yarnum to me, and I get that it's supposed to be like just under Anne Orlando, but it really felt like they were really stuck in like Kanehurst Manor like type. However, I think Fromstock does a great job at blending the styles of almost all the other ones with like Drangliac and basically Undead Berg and all that. Create a real unique game world where the despair really feels like it's setting in. This wouldn't be a FromSoft game without some memorable boss. However, instead of mainly just talking about the bosses, we're going to mention the notable ones from the base game and then the DLC. I know that there's going to be a bunch of people who are going to be like, Oh, well, Mr. YouTuber, man, how the fuck did you do against Twin Princes and the Nameless King? We're going to get there. Calm the hell down. First roadblock I hit was fucking Cursed Greatwood. And before you turn the video off and say, this guy's fucking ass, I'm fucking stupid. I didn't think to actually just hit the boss. So I spent 45 minutes and like 15 attempts looking to hit more of those stupid fucking eggs. He put me on fraud watch for the majority of the playthrough. And the only thing to prove that I'm not a fraudulent ape was the Nameless King. However, we're not calling him that. He's the Nameless Chump. He's not a hard boss fight. Primarily because I've got a Vort Hammer plus 5, and because the game fundamentally isn't hard. For real though, the, the really only difficult part of this was me whipping my stuff because I'm really bad at the dragon fights. And instead of me saying, oh, I should get good at the dragon fights, I'm just going to say FromSoft has bad dragon fights. We're going to pick the loser copium method. The Twin Princes, however, were some of the only bosses that I needed to fight uh, more than four times. Shadow of the Erd Tree really said we have Lothric and Lorien at home, though, because Mikola really took a page out of Lothric's book. They are a super cool fight, though, and I like that the little one is the real fucking menace instead of the big boy. If Radon got back up for his phase two after killing him like Lorien, though, I might have broke my computer. I would have probably freaked the fuck out. The Soul of Cinder is the last base game boss that we're really going to talk about. He was really fucking cool. And even though I managed to get him on like my fourth attempt, the biggest thing is that his music goes nutty. Especially when you get into phase two and he adopts that Gwyn move set and you just hear plink, plink. Long. I knew that this was a peak ending fight. However, that curved sword really just lobotomized me. Dude, I did not know how to play like that. I was out here looking and feeling like Ricky Berwick. Kyle, we did say there are DLC to this game. And there's two major DLC, and I can make a video on each one, but I decided, hey, let's just condense it all into one video. These two major DLC are going to be Ashes of Arendelle and The Ring City. One of these DLCs is peak. The other DLC is just kind of mid. I'm going to give you a second to guess which one is mid. You're right. It's Ashes of Arendelle. Ashes of Arendelle is the mid one. However, before you all get upset and say, Ashes of Arendelle is really good. No, 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 no. It's got one, like, one real boss fight. There's an optional boss fight, but I mean, you can pretty much stumble away from it. It's very open. It feels very empty. But ultimately, the boss fight at the end really does just kind of clutch up and save it. Because the bosses for these DLCs are pretty fire. Now, it surprised me how early you can access Ashes of Ariandel. Because all you gotta do is really beat Crystal Sage. And then if you go th that route, you'll basically just stumble across a church that'll have Slave Knight Goat. And he'll send you to the snowy wastes. Just like a famous Austrian, he wants these painted worlds to get the recognition that they deserve. DLC only's got two of the bosses, like we mentioned in it. Feels really weird since there's like five little sub areas that each could have like a boss. Uh, I went through the whole DLC and by the time I reached Sister Freed, I, I thought I missed something. I did, by the way. I missed the big wolf boss fight. And uh, that's on me. That That's really on me, actually. Sister Freed, however, gave me fucking conniptions, dog. I got so upset playing this boss and it took me like three hours across two separate days. This was the FromSoft I expected throughout the base game after I beat Shadow of the Erd Tree. And finally, it reared its beautiful, ugly bastard. I did solo her, but I was so upset and tilted that I turned my fucking OBS off because I decided, oh, we just keep fucking dying. And I said, you know what? We'll send it again before shutting the game off. And of course, that's what that's when we win. I hate it here. Miyazaki probably laughed his ass off because I got molested by the leaders of his church. 
I did, however, get a screenshot of the boss killed screen, and before anyone says, why didn't you just swap off the Vort Hammer, I didn't want to go get more materials to get a max weapon. I knew I had, like, six Titanite slabs, but I'm such a goddamn ape that we pick one weapon and we stick with it through the whole playthrough. It's a real big weakness, but it helps with perseverance. And you know what? After using the fucking Reduvia, I didn't want to go using a short weapon. The second DLC... Dark Souls 3 is the Ring City. And this thing is nuts. This thing is so cool. It's got more than one boss. Downside, it has Madeir. I don't know why FromSoft keeps giving us these dragon fights. I wish they'd stop. Capcom figured out how to make dragon bosses feel good with like very similar combat mechanics since like 2004. It's literally as simple as like glancing at the kid next to you during the test. Just look at his answers for a minute. He's the guy you want to cheat off of. The environment environment's fucking insane when you mentioned a little bit of it earlier with all the buildings kind of coalescing and it being a giant thing with buildings being taken from different time places in the dark souls universe but it's cool it's really fucking cool and it basically culminates in a fight with you as slave knight gale and there's like two nobodies are fighting over nothing but you know what it, it, we both have a reason to we're trying to link the fire he's trying to save the painting even patches comes back here and it's the literally only time that his bitch ass isn't a giant rat and he kind of bros down with you granted he doesn't have his memory so he doesn't remember how to be a rat we just had to erase him and then he would be cool say slave knight gale he's the real reason for this dlc and he's just trying to get rid of us just so that way he can get our dark sign and give our dark soul to that lady that we saw in arian dell however they forgot that i'm him and unfortunately i forgot that he's also him the very frustrating fight but ultimately it's a great send-off to the entire series of dark souls and that pivot which is basically like the reverse of ludwig where ludwig starts off all like fucking bestial and then he gets his composure back and how gale starts off all fucking composed and then he drops to all fours and he says i'm gonna whoop your fucking cheeks buddy fucking from soft was cooking with straight gasoline and you know what gale deserves all the glazing that i've seen this motherfucker get basically on par with fucking lebron you know what there's always going to be some point where people are saying how do I get better at this game? Overall, difficulty for this game is way easier than Elden Ring. That isn't to say there's not gonna be there. Ah, that isn't to say that there won't be any hairy moments. There's just a lot less of them, and they tend to be a lot earlier because you don't have your weapons that are gonna basically carry you through the game. Primarily, there's a lot less here going on than what was going on in Elden. Dark Souls is sword and board the series. Magic does work and pyromancies I don't fuck with. But then, like that's really all you got. Like like build variations aren't a whole lot. And I'm sure that like the Dark Souls people will come out of the woodwork and say there's a bunch of different builds you can do. I'm like, listen, the game caters to melee builds. Look, look we're not going to like try to say it doesn't. You're going to have an easier time if you pull out a shield how it is bonfires aren't as prevalent as graces so finding shortcuts is another big thing that's going to help you out if you kind of like know how legacy dungeons and elden ring are set up you know how they're set up in almost all the souls game you can do the fucking typical elden ring run to the shortcut grace strategy if you find the need to repair your weapons that means you aren't resting at bonfires at all literally at all i went through the entire game like 20 hours of gameplay and I had not gotten the warning that says, oh, your weapon is in need of repair. So there's actually no reason for repair powder to exist because sitting down in new areas will keep your gear in tip top shape. I don't think that was the case in DS1. And the third tip I've got is you should use that medulla oblongata located between your ear balls. Pattern recognition is going to be a big help for you. If you're lobotomized, I'm sorry this ain't the game for you. If you're coming from another Soulsborne game, the combat's a little slower if you're coming from the later ones like Elden Ring and Bloodborne. However, with that slower combat comes that opportunity for more defensive playstyles. That shield really is a top-tier fucking weapon. In fact, if you find yourself struggling too much, pop them rings, pop out that shield. It's going to be your main bread and butter. Another thing to note, Endurance does not increase 
your equip load. That one, I believe, goes to vitality or some other one. But in my thought, by increasing my stamina, my equip load would go up. That's not the case. Just go find Havel's ring. For multiplayer, there's not much to say. If you're embered, prepare to experience some invasions. If you don't want to deal with the twinks in the early game, just ember before a boss room or play in offline mode. If you do want to play multiplayer, I think the soul level meta is 125. Guessing, I know the, you'd have to look on Reddit to be honest. They, they would probably know more. Final score, this game is aged like fine wine. The base game alone is a pretty good send off. And when you add the two DLC, it gets even better. If you started on Elden Ring and go back to this, you won't be disappointed. It has stood the test of time and it will be added to the list of these from sub classics. 10 out of 10 would choose to leave the world in darkness yet again. As always, more content to come. I do stream on Twitch and I'm probably gonna start streaming more on YouTube to be honest with you. Uh, and I do have socials that I neglect in the description down below. Thank you to everyone who watched the video and supported me. If you're watching this at the time of the upload, I will be live and you can come join me in the chat. Possible that you've already been in chat as I went live uh, pretty much the whole time while I was playing this. I was pretty much live on uh, Twitch. If there's anything you think I should cover, let me know. Until then, have a good one.